Well, so this is the, uh, the first of a series of lectures on Adamar matrices, on uh, complex Adamar matrices. So these are quite uh, quite recent things, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, of work on them, especially by mathematical physicists and physicists with uh, a lot of probability analysis. So uh, that's a bit different from uh, from the Adamar matrices in the real case, where it's mostly combinatorics and design theory. So I'll try to explain this in uh, six uh, short lectures of what are the main ideas behind this, uh, all this recent work. And uh, today actually I'll start with uh, uh, the real of the mark matrices. So let's uh, find the presentation first. So that's going to be it. We'll, uh, we'll talk about the Adamar conjecture. That's somehow the main uh, uh, the main statement there in the real case. It's really very interesting. So let's have this started. So today it's going to be real, and starting from the next lecture, it's going to be complex. So the story here uh, with Adamar started actually before Adamar with Sylvester in the 19th century, 1970 or something. So he, uh, he was motivated by ornaments and things like that. And uh, he started uh, to look at arrays having the property that uh, when comparing two rows, binary arrays, the number of matchings equals the number of mismatching. So you see, that's an example here, comparing it to row. Let's take the, I don't know, first and third one. We have two matchings, two mismatchings, and so on for the other row. So this is a Damar. So that's not a Mar matrix, but uh, now uh, modern mathematics will use minus one and one because this is better. And, well, there actually is three choices. Either you do like uh, like Sylvester, you use two abstract things, or you use zero and one. It's also very mathematical, binary matrix, right? Zero, one, or you use plus and minus one. And the good uh, definition is that of using plus and minus one because uh, parallelized orthogonal is exactly to become um, to a square root of n o n. When is the orthogonal group? So a rescaled version of the orthogonal matrix. That's what you, you need. So uh, this is quite interesting as a remark. So you see the, from this you get right away that the, the columns must be orthogonal too, because uh, if you transpose uh, matrix with binary entries, of course, it stays binary. If you transpose an orthogonal matrix, it stays orthogonal. So uh, this is this is the best uh, for you to, to do the nice plus minus one matrices. Now, uh, what examples do we have of uh, such matrices? We have the Walsh ones. Uh, so that's the simplest one: one, one, one minus one. Then by uh, doing tensor products double indices, that's, uh, that's the way of doing it. You see, it's very, very simple, the formula. Uh, you can check right away that uh, if HK are Adamar, this is Adamar, right? Take scalar products, it's a one-line computation. So starting from this matrix here, we can construct more. So uh, we can tensor W2 with itself, you see? I get this thing. So as the idea, somehow, you have to convert this uh, double index thing into lexicographic, uh, using the lexicographic order into usual indices, one, two, three, four. And if you think a bit at it, uh, this means somehow, if you tensor W2 uh, with itself, this means to put somehow four blocks like this, following the pattern, uh, each block being W2, but following the pattern of W2 itself. I mean, uh, the first block, you put minus one. Here as sign, you see, uh, W2, 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 and minus W2. So this is, yeah, that's exactly this matrix here, but written in plus minus one form. And uh, you can do it on and on. So again, uh, so-called Walsh matrices of sizes two to the n, very used in radio coding. So uh, that's the first application of the Adamar matrices, all these coding businesses, and actually the main one. Now, uh, at the level of general theory, so what can we say? Well, these are very simple things. So uh, if you take an Adamar matrix, it stays Adamar if you permute the rows or the columns or switching signs to one row or 
or switching sign to, to one column. Also taking the transpose, that's what uh, we, we saw, making tensor products, it's a one on computation. So all this, actually not even need this computation. So you see, uh, if I take uh, this definition for data model matrices, which is the best one, so binary matrix and rows orthogonal, which means it must be in square root of n o n. All these operations here preserve both this and this. I mean, it's just clear, right? Binary matrices are stable under all this. The orthogonal group is stable under all this. So I know the story. Now, so you see, there are many operations. So I'm trying, for instance, to classify the R matrices. You, uh, you, the natural idea is to mod out by certain uh, some of these relations. And the convention, the standard one is to use one and two. So two other R matrices are called equivalent if uh, you can pass from one to the other by uh, permitting rows, columns, or switching signs. The transpose is not included because. I remind you the transpose comes from the fact that the transpose of orthogonal matrix is orthogonal, which is well known, but it is quite deep. Somehow you cannot really see, you see it on, uh, uh, from the definition. Okay, so that's why uh, the equivalence notion is like this. Now let's get to some uh, mathematical motivations too. So uh, besides this, uh, these things coming from Walsh matrices, have this determinant bound of Adamar, given a binary matrix, the determinant is maximized by Adamar. And this is something just trivial. I mean, it depends on the, your definition of the determinant, and the correct definition, which is not taught in schools, but it doesn't mean that it's not the correct one, is that the, the determinant by definition of a system of vectors is the sign volume of the parallel pattern they form. So this is the correct definition. I mean, what you learn at the university, all that, and what I teach too, because that's why I have to. All these formulas with uh, whatever is the unique thing. Nah, no power or, um, of, uh, of Rn or uh, symmetric power or these formulas with permutations, whatever. These are theorems, okay? It's not the definition is this, I mean. And the sign, of course, uh, the only tricky thing is the sign. You need the sign for having additivity, right? But it's not, not very complicated to define. I mean, you have two orientations. And, uh, okay, that's the definition which is forgotten. And with this, the, the other more theorem is trivial because you see the determinant being a volume is smaller than the product of the norms. All the norms are square root of n, so we're done. And the quality, of course, is when the vectors are pairwise orthogonal. Very nice. Uh, so if you want, if you want this, uh, remember the Adamar matrices appear as the intersection of mn plus of minus one n square root of n o n. So this Adamar bound allows you to locate Adamar matrices inside the binary matrices. Now there is also dual results. You take the orthogonal group is scale and you try to locate inside the binary matrices. Once again, the analysis. And uh, here's the result. So uh, it's better formulated over O in itself. I mean, this rescaling on it at the end. So the one norm of the matrix, meaning this thing here, sum of absolute uh, values, is uh, maximized by the rescale of the MAR matrices. Why this Cauchy Schwartz? I mean, you see this smaller than this. Matrix being orthogonal, that's exactly n square root of n. The equality, uh, where do we have inequality here? Well, in Cauchy Schwartz, when the numbers are proportional, but now since the sum of square root is fixed, they must be precisely square root over n, so the risk scale must be other one. Very nice. So we have uh, what we have so far some mathematical motivations, somehow, one of the determinants, and this uh, Walsh matrices, which are well known to be very useful. No, so uh, this is definitely worth investigating these matrices. Let's uh, let's understand their uh, their structure. So uh, the first observation is that the size cannot be anything. It must be a multiple of four, unless it's two, two is special. So why this? Uh, well, let's assume that then it's at least three, okay? So I want to prove that it's multiple of four. And for this, 
uh, well, just permute rows, columns, multiply them on minus one in order to, uh, to arrange for the beginning to be like this, you see, for uh, kind of blocks. Now, if we cannot, but by x, y, z, t, the, the length of these blocks, you write down the orthogonality conditions between the first three rows, you get three equations, right? And these are this one, this one, this one. Solution x, y, z, t must be equal. Now, since the size is the sum of x, y, z, t, it's a multiple of four. So I got this. Now, the problem is, yeah, what to do? I mean, uh, when n is not a multiple of four, for many applications, in engineering physics, you need these Adamar matrices, right? So, uh, some, and sometimes you really, really need them uh, when n is not a multiple of four. So, I'd like to have some kind of analogs of what to do. And the idea here is to go back to, to analysis. So, we had two uh, Adamar determinant bounds and that one norm seen from Cauchy Schwartz. So, you get your answer. So, if you follow that way with the determinants, for any n, you can talk about so-called quasi-Adamar matrices. These are the binary matrices determining, maximizing the determinants. So when n is multiple of four, of course, these are exactly the Adamar matrices. But in general, these are, uh, yeah, they exist, definitely. You can study them. So uh, that's uh, one, uh, one way of, uh, of replacing Adamar matrices when they don't, uh, exists. Now the other way is uh, the one norm. So uh, these are called almost Adamar. It's a rescale orthogonal matrix maximizing the one norm. So once again, uh, when n is multiple of four, these are exactly the, the Adamar matrices. Uh, in general, uh, these are some, uh, some other matrices. Okay, now let's go to the Adamar conjecture, which is the main purpose of, uh, of today's uh, talk. So, uh, yeah, just the conjecture for any A, and there exists uh, an Adamar matrix, a yeah, multiple of four. So, this is, of course, okay for four, eight, 16, and so on, by these are the Walsh matrices, many other constructions done by humans or by computers. And uh, as the conclusion of all this construction is that the number of Adamarts grows exponentially with that. So it's quite surprising we just need one for proving the Adamar conjecture and we are not able to, uh, to do that. So uh, there's a funny thing here actually because that, uh, as of today, the verification goes up to this number of the beast 666. And uh, there's no joke here. So this is not a multiple of four. So uh, it's in the middle there where it stops up to 664, it's known, and 668 is unknown. Quite funny on this. So uh, let's present now some advances on this. So what's missing first? 12 is missing and then 20. Yeah, let's see how this works. So the construction here, which is very beautiful, is due to Paley in the, I think, 30s or 40s maybe. So we take uh, FQ, filled with Q elements, uh, Q must be odds prime power, we define this character. So uh, the quadratic thing, so zero for zero, one if it's a square, minus one otherwise. And then Q is the kind of a circular matrix made by this character. Now Pelle says the second following thing. So there are two cases. If Q is three mod four, Q is one mod four. So in the first case, uh, well, Q plus one will be a multiple of four. And actually for that multiple of four, Q plus one, you have this Adamar matrix, which is, uh, so you take Q, this thing here, the quadratic character, you add uh, row of one, column of minus one, zero, and then you sum of the identity. This is Q symmetric. Now in the other case, Q is one mod four, well, here for getting multiple of four, you have to take two Q plus two. I mean, that's, uh, that's the thing. And uh, this is multiple of four. So it starts a bit the same. You take basically the same thing as before here, but uh, with ones everywhere. So you take Q and then you put one, one, and zero. 
So this is size q plus one. And now the idea is that to will expand somehow. It's a kind of tensor product idea. So every time I see a zero, I replace it with this guy here. And every time I see a plus minus one, so there are minus ones inside q, of course, I replace them with this. Tali two says that uh, this is an MR and symmetric. So let's see how the proof of, of all this goes. Uh, well, first of all, it's useful to us, or use a lot of tricks here. So uh, that's a good trick to denote by one all identity matrices, and also by, by I like this, all the matrices which contain only ones, no matter if they are rectangular, square, even vectors. Uh, this simplifies a lot of things, you see. Now, the first things to be done is to uh, remember Q is this quadratic thing, so to do a bit of number theory, and uh, these are actually the things that we'll need. It's somehow, it's a kind of uh, um, orthogonality condition. Well, it's not exactly orthogonal, but it's up to this I thing. And then this thing here. So the sum somehow are uh, on rows and columns are uh, zero. And in addition, there are these things here. Uh, it's either um, asymmetric or, uh, or Q-symmetric. So all this follows from uh, from this, I mean, uh, yeah, basic number theory. So that's all we need as number theory. So the claim now is that with good notations and everything, uh, and these ingredients, everything will be trivial. So Pele one, let's prove that. So remember the matrix in the statement was Q, and then uh, one minus one zero, and then identity added. With tricky notation, I mean, not putting indices in anything. So one always means identity on whatever size. And I like this means a one, all one matrix. It's just this matrix in the statement. And the advantage now is that you can do a very easily computation. So I multiply by the transpose, I get this. Q square, we knew that we are in the case now. Q is, uh, is three mod four. So you see this happens. So I plug in here and I get my Q square. And yeah, on the mark. Very nice. Now let, let's go to, to palette two. So uh, that was more tricky, but the idea will be to get it via tensor products. That's obviously a kind of tensor product, right? If you write it uh, in a clever way, you'll, you'll get it right away in a page. But the book must slide on I mean, the page. Uh, if you don't, you'll need the one PDF page, I guess, for doing it. So uh, let's do it in one slide. So the idea was we're taking the same matrix as before, uh, but with pluses here, and then we're replacing zeros, one by nine, minus ones by different uh, matrices. So there are actually two matrices, one for zero and one for uh, plus minus one replacing. Well, in terms of product notation, it's just this, I mean, as simple as that. And also again, in your tensor calculus. So FG are exactly the matrices here, F. And G. It's clear, I mean, it's a kind of tensor product of this with F and G. So I write it like this you do a tensor product, of course, F square, G square, FG plus GF, all this you compute, so you're done. It's very, very simple, Pelling, okay? But uh, I have these tricks here, tensor calculus. So with this now, let's go back to the Adamar conjecture. So I can verify it up to 88, okay? So the idea is that, uh, well, you have all these large matrices. When you don't have them, Pali 1. Now, if Pali 1 doesn't work, Pali 2, what else? And finally, as the last, uh, last thing that you can use, you can tensor. So Pali 1 or W2 actually fill the gaps at 40 and 56. And uh, all these numbers, well, it, uh, these are multiples of 4 up to 88. 88. Problem, however, is that 92, uh, this don't work. I mean, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So what to do at 92? And here there is this construction by Williamson. So uh, once again, it is, looks like a kind of tensor thing. We'll see that there are tensors there too, in quaternions. So assuming that you, you take uh, matrices, which are binary, uh, symmetric pairwise commutes, I file these. Then this matrix here is Adamar. And in addition, such things exist at uh, 23, which means size 92, the one missing there. 
So to prove this, once again, we have to take this matrix and write it in a clever form. Well, that's it, it's very simple. So it's, let's go back to it. So it's A times or something, B times or something, and so on. So you see, I just said that this is A times the identity, of course, what's written here. Now B tensor, I have a matrix here. It's one minus one, minus one, one, and zero otherwise. So I call this matrix I. And so on for the other. And uh, these matrices are well known, are called the quaternion units. But even if you don't know them, I mean, yeah, these are by definition the places where ABCD appear here. Okay, I call them uh, 1A, AGK. So now with this, once again, you are. Uh, so you do the calculus there, and whenever you need the uh, I-square or things like that, compute them right away, and you get your conclusion. Now, uh, the point is that in order to apply this, it's really hard, so that's why, let's go back to the statement now, so this is true, it's Adamar, 23, it's actually very hard to do a computer search. Well, this was done on computers in the 50s, so, uh, and that's uh, performance, so uh, that's why you have to assume that it's circulant, the matrix for things to uh, yeah, to work. I mean, it's not needed for the matrix to be a Damar, the circulant assumption, but it's needed later if you write on a computer somehow without uh, many, uh, not many more, that much power, let's say. And uh, yeah, they exist on, on a computer. The problem, however, is that. Uh, it goes on and on. I mean, you have Walsh, and uh, you get up to eight, to Pelly, 88, and Williamson also, uh, it stops at some point. I mean, always, always have to come up with new measures, and this doesn't bring us as closer to the solution of the Adamar conjecture. So, a uh, kind of new idea is needed. And uh, there is this idea of cosecic matrices, which is very interesting. So, just take a, a co-cycle on a, a finite group. That's just a matrix, okay? Usually people write them like this with braces, but you can write it with indices in a matrix. And if the rows of this co-cycle are orthogonal, you say that, uh, well, it's an Adamar matrix, of course. You say that it's a co-cyclic Adamar matrix. As basic example, Walsh, of course, that's your group. I mean, you can kind of fill it on the... Uh, from the definition, and that's your cycle. And actually, many, many examples are cycles to the point that there is this conjecture, at least one uh, cycling matrix for any, for any uh, very interesting conjecture. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good because before it was designed here, you know, now this is groups, I mean, it's algebra, but uh, it's somehow doable groups. So, well, that's it. Anyway, that's uh, that's the big advance in modern Adamara matrices. This conjecture formulating it. Now, one more thing. So, circular matrices here. Uh, this is this matrix, obviously Adamara and it's circular. And uh, the conjecture is that this is the only one up to this equivalence. I mean, uh, switching rows, columns, and. Uh, this is amazing because it depends only on the first. I mean, circular matrix means to take a vector and then to rotate it, right? So it's a conjecture about a vector, and uh, that vector is made of one and minus one. So if you want, it's about a set. If you take the set of positions of minus ones, everything depends on that set, right? So the Mars means that when you translate the set, number of matchings must be number of mismatchings. matchings. So that's your condition. And the conjecture due to riser, which is also very old, from the 50s, I think, is so there is no set satisfying this thing here for any k. It's just amazing. So this is open for a long time. Okay, so very difficult questions. Now uh, what's the answer to all this? Probably analysis somewhere, but no one really knows how to do analysis. So uh, this really looks like analysis questions, especially because of the Mark conjecture is, uh, is that, uh, well, the true conjecture is that the number of Adamar matrices is exponential with that. And that's an analysis question. And the one that we know that there is a least one should be a corollary of that. So yeah, it's probably an analysis question or he knows how to start some of the analysis there. But there is a very good start due to the Lonian Levin, which is actually an rectangular case. 
So as you can define a partial Adamar matrix to be just a rectangular matrix having rows pairwise orthogonal. As basic examples, of course, you have the uh, matrices of Adamar matrices, which truncate, but there are some which don't appear in this way. So uh, there are many interesting, uh, interesting algebra there. Uh, now, at Delonier and Levin proved that they were really able to count these matrices when n goes to infinity, of course, subject to the assumption. Uh, and multiple of four, and uh, yeah, they computed the probability. It's exact, you see, the pi there formula. That's just amazing. And uh, let's see a bit for the proof. Well, the starting point is this the probability for a random uh, rectangular matrix to be partial at R is the same as the probability for a length and random walk with the increments from this to return at the origin. So that's just a reformulation of the Adamar condition, which is uh, probabilistic, let's say. And this, uh, well, you start to compute, you get something like this, still depending on your set E. Then you apply a inversion Fourier formula, you get something like this. And then if you look at their paper, it's like, I don't know, 10 or 20 pages of computation. So it's really tough to get the results. So uh, yeah, that's something. Uh, Amazing, and uh, I think that that's uh, that's not how the way of doing things. I mean, the idea is to know how to count these things, so the idea is always to try to make things square now, to build on this what they did around 11 to get towards the square case, and there to try to count some of the Adam R and prove that there are exponentially many with respect to n. So, the Adam R conjecture is something a bit anecdotic. You need to prove that there are exponentially many in its analysis. So yeah, this is probably the good, uh, the good theorem. Okay, so that was it. Uh, next lecture will be uh, about complex Adamar matrices. We'll get away from all these uh, difficult things because there there are complex matrices for any n. And there are also circular matrices for any n. So these are you know, like trivial results for your matrices. But we'll see that there are many other questions like geometry comes into play and uh, yeah, especially geometry, algebraic geometry, and also some physics, whatever other things. Okay, so uh, see you see you soon.